Hello, N4H&H here. So, I just had an opportunity from what's going on on the band right now to follow up on the uh, previous video where I used the whiteboard to go through the block diagram of a receiver. So, uh, let me show you a few of those things that I mentioned in the video, um, in the block diagram video, in a real world situation. <clears throat> so, you hear that noise? Yeah, you too. No, you, have you this is on net on uh, 7153. Well, while I'm at it, let me show you this. So, you're going to find more and more of this happening as more and more electronic devices uh, enter the market that, quite honestly, uh, aren't being scrutinized well enough for uh, generating RF. So there's, there's no telling what that is. So that's an opportunity to use a manual notch filter. Four hundred and twenty hertz knocked it out. Now when I move my VFO, it's going to change the, the frequency of that. See, 720. So I have to, once you settle on a frequency, then you kick in your manual notch. Now, why not use auto notch? Well, auto notch is not very effective against something like that because it's a little too narrow. And it's looking for a pure tone. See this? You can see the a little uh, graphic there. A little bit wider to handle that because you notice that's not really a pure tone. Okay, so... We've got a guy here on 7153. Now the tone is about 2000 Hertz. So what that is, is that's a heterodyne, okay? We talked about heterodyne in that previous video and it's being produced by something in the area that is a frequency that is beating against what I'm listening to with my receiver, creating a heterodyne in uh that's audible to my ear so in other words it's falling into the range of our hearing now we can hear up to about twenty thousand hertz depending on how old we are uh but the radio itself doesn't hear you know much beyond uh four thousand hertz and in fact if you look at the width here i've got it set on 1.8 this radio will go up to four kilohertz four thousand hertz but I have it narrowed down because hear all that? So somebody's up on 157 and they're wide. No, he's, he's in reason, he's, he's less than three kilohertz. So, he's all right. But I'll use this as an opportunity. Like these guys, it's a net where they do CW as well. Now, this is give you a little bit of an idea of what I meant in the video about CW being narrow. Watch, I'm gonna move. Oh yeah, here it is. That's where the noise was. These guys are only two kilohertz away. But notice, Notice how uh, the CW doesn't carry as far as the voice does. So here we are dealing with something two kilohertz away. Now remember the rule of thumb I gave you in the previous video. Ways to combat this. Um, shift. If the noise is a low pitch like that is, that lower honking sound, use a shift and go positive. Now it's going to thin out the audio of who you're listening to, but also should help minimize some of that uh, honking you're hearing. Now the other thing you do is narrow your width. I'll go down to 1.5. Here 
huts in there when I'm when I'm down here in the negative region and even even at zero shift at zero but if I if I go plus with it since it's a lower pitched QR Mary it helps minimize it now this radio has the pre-selectors I mentioned in the previous video uh, this one has the uh, external model called a mu tuner sitting over here behind my monitor and you hear a little bit of it there let me get rid of that tone there we go manual notch great it's great to have both manual notch and auto notch like auto notch is mainly going to stop somebody that's tuning where manual notch can knock out these header dials Okay, so what I've done here is I'm shifting the center point of the mu tuner away from the free, you see they're two kilohertz above. So I'm shifting away from where they are with the mu tuner, dropping him down. You look at the S meter, dropping him down in signal strength. And notice how thin he sounds. That's because I've got the width set at one five. Okay, so let's see what happens when I hear that. There's that interference again. So what I'm doing, since he's two kilohertz away, I want to get my receiver below two kilohertz of bandwidth. Now, you might go, well, how about 1.95? It's not a brick wall, okay? So there's going to be a little bit of, um, you know, bleed over, if you will. Uh, the slope, you, you can kind of get a visual here. It's, it's not a, a definite cutoff. There's always going to be a little bit of overlap. So I'm going to tighten up. Okay, they're not talking right now. When they start talking again, we'll see how tight we have to go. See, the shift brings back the bottom end in his voice, but it would bring back that interference from the station two kilohertz away. And remember, they can be two kilohertz high and the, and the interference can be the low honky sound. It depends on upper sideband or lower sideband, so it's going to vary according to what uh, mode you're in. So just remember the rule of thumb. If the noise is a lower pitched honking kind of sound, then you want to go positive shift. If it's a high-pitched metallic sound, you want to go negative shift. If they start talking again, I'll I'll try to illustrate the uh, when to use the negative shift. Well, uh, there's a station here, so I'll go. I'll go to one five nine, two kilohertz above him. So pretend I was having a QSO here, and he moved in. Hear the higher higher metallic sound. That calls for negative shift. And the amount of shift you do is look look. As I, they work together, as I get n more narrow here with the width, and remember this is that DSP width, this is the computer part of the radio. See, it gets worse when I bring the shift back up, but as, as I go more narrow, they work together. But now, now we have some interference from below. You can't attack both of them. You just have to compromise. But that, that honkiness, that's coming from the other one. I guess I have 
have to take his advice, which I will. He said. So, see, now that's the case for. negative shift here it come right back now I am using the mu tuner to, to help me a little bit let's try it without the uh, the pre-selector here shift does a pretty good job of course the pre-selector was set for that previous situation Yeah, that's the only problem is when you got it from both both sides. <laughs> you got to pick your poison, you know, and the, I guess the rule of thumb is uh, you want to mitigate the one that's the strongest. I would say the high pitch one is is the most annoying. bandwidth a little more now this radio has a, a um, option here for CWN inside Benco NAR narrow and now the maximum is 1.8 but it can go down to 200 but you can't understand what they're saying When they talk again, I can probably understand what they're saying with a 1.1. Well, now they've all quit talking. Well. See, that's a 1.1 filter width. I can understand him. If I had to in crowded band conditions, I could work with that. One point six five is where it gets more pleasant. But again, crowded band conditions, you have to do what you have to do, and of course, that's going to be during contest conditions or, you know, uh, God forbid, a national emergency. So three QSOs going on here. <laughs> look, look at that. You got one five three, one five five, and one five seven. All right. These people are. Somebody's being rude. It's the ladies and gentlemen agreement that we leave three kilohertz of separation between sideband conversations. And these guys are only two kilohertz away from these guys who are only two kilohertz away from these guys. So uh, you, you don't want to be labeled a lid, okay? L-I-D, a lid. Um, this is terrible operating practice. Now, I don't know who's at fault here because somebody was on here first and then somebody must have moved in and just disregarded that there was already a QSO uh, going on. And it may be that, you know, the net has been going on for years and they, as far as they're concerned they feel like it's other people's responsibility to move away so then they, there may be an, have been a QSO on 155 and then the net started on 153 I don't know uh, but you know nobody owns the frequency not even a net it's it's just a ladies and gentlemen agreement that we uh, try to you know allow three kilohertz of bandwidth and, and of course the reason for the three kilohertz is like I mentioned in the previous video, let me get back off of the narrow. All right. Well, thank you. Um, There's three kilohertz of bandwidth. Uh, I'll be back. Hear how much I'll better be back. the voice sounds. 
It's not bad though at 2.4. Okay, it's a call, it's a call Bravo Oscar Quebec. And like I mentioned in my previous video, well, even 2.1 is well, okay. It's, not, it's long wrong right now, and it's Bravo 1. Oscar 1.5 starts sounding that, nasally. Same name of Dennis and, uh, in Tennessee, that, that's kind of weird. So the gentleman's agreement and ladies' agreement <laughs> has always been, know? hey, let's give 3 kilohertz uh, because it takes 3 kilohertz for the human voice to sound good on sideband. Uh, so whatever happened here, um, I encourage you, if you're new to amateur radio, please avoid this. Uh, you don't want to get labeled a lid. It's just a derogatory term for a, for a ham radio operator who um, doesn't, mm, well, how you want to say, it's not really rules, but um, is not acting nice, okay? And because of people like that, we need to deploy some of the advanced features that we have available to us in filtering and DSP. Okay, so I had that opportunity. I thought I would take advantage of it to uh, illustrate in real time some of the things that were pointed out in the uh, block diagram of the previous video where we went over the uh, uh, stages of a receiver and, and what they do. All right, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, thank you, Patreons, for helping me keep the channel going. www.patreon.com slash N4HNH. Uh, that's where you can go if you would like to become a Patreon for this channel and, and uh, help me keep the content coming. And, of course, please like the video and subscribe. That helps as well. Thanks a lot. 73 from N4HNH.